So let me ask a few questions at this point. Are you a debater? Or can you define yourself as debater? Please, yes or no? Yes. Debater? I don't think that actually many of us would immediately classify ourselves as debaters and define ourselves as debaters. Then, are you a public speaker? As like presidential inaugural addresses and millions of people? Maybe no. But if I ask this question, are you a speaker? I assume everyone in this room deserves to be a speaker. Then one more question. What is public speaking? Am I the only one doing the public speaking here? Well, today I would like to descend from its normative definition. All of your speakings are public speaking and should be treated that way regardless of the fact that you're talking to mass group of people, or just one person. Let me introduce an intriguing new function in Facebook. Maybe you would have utilized it in the past. And it's called the temporary profile picture. But why temporary? When I see the most frequent uploads of these profile pictures were some specific dates. April 16th, September 11th, and November 13th. April 16th with hashtag we won't forget. September 11th with hashtag 911 memorial. And November 13th with hashtag pray for Paris. I saw many of my friends unloading these profile pictures paying much condolences. But somehow, ironically, after just one day, what I could only see was some smiling selfies with captions like, lol. <laughs> and we call this activism a slacktivism, an ideal type of activism for a lazy generation. Sure, it is great for garnering attention for an issue, which is a truly an effective and crucial part of an activism. However, this viral activism on social media is incredibly superficial in that it is just a fact that suddenly booms in popularity and just dies out as it quickly appears. People mindlessly swift in before these managements and these kind of campaigns and move on to next campaigns in vogue in abandoning the previous one and just say, I'm active. Selectivism is even criticized due to its inverse effect that it discourages people's propensity to protest for change and volunteer for an organization and make them to rather select another substitute called media. It is true that it's hard to deny the fact that it's, it brings exclusive benefit with its wide range of impacts. And given the fixation on all things digital from blogging to social networking to Twitter, Every click of your mouse is guaranteed to gain these immediate media attention. So maybe it's a really effective way for campaigning or expressing your own opinions. However, selectivism is a bare minimum, a merely an acceptable starting point for expressing individuals' participations on such movements. Then how can we make active voice? Maybe some fancy words? Roger Love, as one of the world's leading authorities of voice and speech training, quoted that only 7% accounts with these words. And the rest, 90%, has to do with your voice. Pitch, pace, tone, melody, and body language, and these matter. Then how can we make this kind of engagements? Practices? For me, it was being an actor. As I tried to act as an actor, it enabled me to sympathize the character that I wanted to represent. And I tried really hard to fully understand her. As much as I adopt myself into the character, it became more successful. But does this practice and does this acting make my voice and sound resonant to millions of people? 
Here I would like to introduce a story in Cape Town, South Africa. For an international speech competition, I prepared my persuasive speech about microaggression, which was one of the topics that I thought it required certain kinds of universal attentions and contributions for solutions. I memorized my speech again and again, including some acting factors for sympathy. Expecting other competitors to bring up some amazing and moving speeches, I went to a small trip with my teammates to Robben Island. But here, surprisingly, it was there in which I met the best speaker in my life. In Robben Island, there is a jail. Here, Nelson Mandela was in prison for 28 years, and thousands of people of color were imprisoned and suffered from harsh racial discrimination even in the jail cell. But the most shocking aspect of this tour was that the tour guide himself was also one of them. He was imprisoned there for seven years because he belonged to an African National Congress. And he himself stood in front of tens of the tourists in the jail cell he was tortured to explain what happened there. He explained how ID cards were written, how these kinds of prisoners exercised hunger strikes, and how the cells were divided into colors. His stand itself was extremely courageous, but also his comments were more like a speech. I've watched numerous speeches fighting racism, numerous campaigns, such as being hashtag fight racism. But I was for sure that his speech was way more influencing than any other campaigns, such as hashtag fight racism. And I was for sure that his speech was way more impressive than any other speeches that I had a chance to listen in that competition. Why? There were tons of amazing speeches talking about why socialism is better than democracy, why science is important, why cat calls and sexual comments on women are problematic, and so on. But I found that nobody was actually and virtually involved into what they were saying. It doesn't mean that you should directly involve into every little kind of movement. That's practically impossible. And not all your opinions would derive from your own self-reflection. However, just simply putting some acting factors cannot link to the resonance. You should find yourself, and you should have the courage enough to be involved into the issue, and have the courage to put virtual efforts. That makes your voice and sounds strong and impressive. Then how can we be awake? It's very simple. Let's not write or say anything that we, you don't agree with. Maybe this sounds pretty obvious, but at the same time pretty radical. But why not? Here's a story in Soviet Union. During the Cold War era, there was a method to brainwash American spies in Soviet Union. First, they were told to write why America is good. Since they were mostly very patriotic, they did really easily. And then they were told to write why America is bad. As they're forced to write and tell why America is bad, and as they constantly continue this process, they ultimately became brainwashed and they believed that America is actually bad. The words are this strong and effective. As you speak and write what you didn't believe in, the American spies became unpatriotic. What do you think the language is? Our spirits speak being into an existence. Quoting from a Canadian clinical psychology professor, Jordan Peterson, if you falsify your words, you corrupt your souls, damaging your psyche. Even scientifically proven, those who say something they don't truly believe in or fully understand, they become to believe what they said at the end of the day. Fake figures that champion such just socially dominant opinions are no more than just an awkward character. As you articulate counter-arguments 
to what you truly believe in, you get to believe and you get to deceive your own character, polluting your own character. You may say you're different, and I'm very independent to say my arguments, and I have this stance. Maybe that's right, but let's see. You would find yourself frequently expressing some ki certain kinds of ideas and words that you don't fully understand or don't fully agree with. We write essays or reports in a way that teachers and professors would like. We hesitate to raise our hands when no one else does. And we also hesitate to challenge socially dominant opinions. If you bring up certain kinds of opposing arguments to those socially dominant opinions, you might collide with certain multiple social consequences in a larger way such as being fired in the society and that makes people hesitate. However, that makes you to pretend to be someone else, not yourself. However, the courage that can lead you to be involved into the issue, into the opinions that you really wanted to support, can only make sincere changes. Centered on our being, truly engaging into my arguments and my writings, can only give us power to withstand suffering without being corrupted. The characters that you really wanted to provide, the words that you really wanted to speak, is certain things that you would actually want to voice out. And that makes you strong, that makes you strong on your side. So be vocal. Don't just pretend to be someone else, not ourselves. Is what I think right? What is my view? These are the main questions that you should ask first for yourself. And after truly recognizing the answers, and then you can advocate it to change others and also tending yourself. Fancy words, some quotes from prominent figures and singular and prevalent debate styles in debate tournaments. These are all forms and structures. We spend too much time wrapping our boxes, but we oftentimes forget that our boxes are empty. I was also one of the debaters who had this identical speech styles to become a strong speaker and pretended to be a strong speaker. Simply utilizing certain kinds of debate words, calling Mr. Speaker and adjudicators, I thought I could be a good debater. And that was the we way to win certain kinds of debate tournaments. Maybe someone else who doesn't know well about the debates would say, oh, that's awesome. But the true listeners can easily acknowledge the fact that those kinds of seemingly good fictions are just useless. Our forms are in a vacant shell without sincerity. Those formality makes pretty rules that, are, that makes our lives less pretty. We cover the words with showy wrappings, but in the inside, you forget to put certain kinds of unique factors that could represent your own character and your ego. Then you forget what actually you wanted to say. And lacking this sincerity, you get to forget your own character and that makes you to be vacant. So simply just utilizing those kinds of words and forms and structures would only become, make you to forget the inside. But the true purpose of forms and structures were to reach inner fullness. So if you only focus on the outside, you forget the inside. But the inside was what comprises us and what makes us and what symbolizes our identity and humanity. External covers cannot. And we are much more than what they want us to be. You may say that your arguments may not be socially good, and like social, your arguments may be socially wrong, and your arguments may not be persuasive enough. However, if you just pretend to have that argument socially dominant opinion as yours, 
pretending to be a good supporter of this argument. These kinds of persuasiveness wouldn't be revealed because you would never know why that argument was the most persuasive in society or what kind of loopholes that arguments may have. In order to make a persuasion, you should know what you're talking about and you should truly support what you're talking about. Since you yourself doesn't understand it in the first place, you can never persuade others. And that makes you very vacant. So at the end of the day, as your public voice and sincerity combine, you gain this long-lasting resonance. As these, all the aspects of yourself is filled with your courage and balanced with your courage, you can then advocate it with your voice. Spectivism that I mentioned at the beginning can also be solved in this method by actually utilizing these nonprofits to make certain kinds of compelling speeches and giving out the stories that lets the people to opt in with virtual efforts and make public to actually have this will to give out certain kinds of active voice and active engagements. And that's the point when you gain that resonance. And I would like to ask one last question. Would you pretend or tend? Thank you. <laughs>